Hey there, my name is Paul Halliday and I'll be showing you how we can use observables from RxJS within our applications. So if you haven't seen observables or used observables in the past, they are quite similar to promises, but they allow us to get multiple values back and of course they can run synchronously or asynchronously. So let's first off start by importing observable from rxjs slash observable and make sure you've got rxjs within your project. We can then make a new observable by saying let my observable is equal to rx.observable.create. So we're creating an observable. Then inside of our create function, we have access to an observer and this observer can pass values down the data stream. So if we wanted to, in our observable, pass the numbers 1, 2, and 3, we could use observer.next. And when we use .next, anything that subscribes to the observable will get values that come from the .next. So we can start off by passing 1, and we'll take a look at what this looks like inside of our console. So to subscribe to that value of 1, we can use my observable. Dot subscribe and then we can take whatever is in the data stream and console.log the data. So if we run this, we get one. We could then pass observer.next two and run this again and then we get one and two. But I mentioned that it's more like a stream than a promise. So a promise what usually happens is we ask for some sort of data and then we get the data in the then call. Observables, we can get data asynchronously, but they can come at different times. So while one and two might be synchronous, so when we ask for the values, they are instantly given, we can make a timeout function. And within the timeout function, we can say observer.next3, and we'll make this two seconds. So after two seconds, we'll send the three down the data stream. So one and two, and then finally, we get the three. So the great thing about using observables is that we don't have to make any assumptions about when the data is going to come down the stream. We can subscribe to the events and any data that's passed down the stream via observer.next, we can get whenever they arrive. So there we are creating our first observable with RxJS and subscribing to the data stream. We've also looked at how we pass things down the stream with observer.next, and we've also looked at doing it asynchronously by using the setTimeout function. Now the setTimeout in this instance is just replicating what it's like to go and get data from a server in the real world. You might have a variety of other asynchronous functions that you might want to run, but you can see how we can pass that value when we get it down the observable stream. So I hope this helped and you now have a greater understanding of observables within RxJS. My name is Paul Halliday and I'll see you in the next video.